stars of our favourite show, uh, Wentworth. My name's John, and normally my role in Screen Star, oh, someone just waved, hello. Um, my role in Screen Star would be to be sat on stage chatting to the guests and roaming amongst you with a microphone. Well, my role today is pretty similar, but all online. I'm going to get the chat going, I'll get the ball rolling, and then I've got lots of questions that people have been sending in in advance. Look, I've got them all here. So I'll be randomly picking these questions to ask our guests. Uh, I can't guarantee I'll get through them all, but I'll do my absolute best. Um, what else do you need to know? Ah, of course, there's also going to be an opportunity for a select um, group of you to appear online in glorious Technicolor and ask a question live on screen. But I'll talk about that a little bit more later on once we get going. Right, let's have a look. Lots of, oh, lots and lots of people saying hello. We've got here, we've got uh, Zoe. Uh, happy, hello, Vicky has just come on. And who was, oh, like, so there's someone from Canada who's scrolling past so fast. Wow, people are coming on from all over the world. Well, actually, even us as a team here, I'm currently sat in my study in the UK, in Birmingham. Uh, we've obviously got our actors waiting to come on and have a chat to you, uh, one in Melbourne, one in Tasmania, and behind the scenes we've got Amanda who's in the USA, who's looking after all of the technical gubbings and making sure that we, we look and sound okay and that we can all hear each other, or well, that's the plan. So this is our first online interactive event. What could possibly go wrong? Let's invite to the screen, rather than the stage, let's invite to the screen two actors you know very well for portraying the roles of Joan Ferguson and Vera Bennett, or also known as The Freak and Vinegar Tits. I just said tits online, you had to do that. Let's welcome Pamela Rave and Kate Atkinson. Fingers crossed, here they come. Hey, look at that, it, it, it actually works. <laughs> Hello. And I've been unmuted. This is dangerous. <laughs> <laughs> unmuted in Melbourne. Yes. Unmuzzled in Tasmania. Hello, everyone. <laughs> Hello, Kate. <laughs> Hello, Hello. Hi. Hi, John. Hello there. You're, this is how every conversation starts these days. Is this, could, can you hear me? Can, I, I can hear you. Can you, can I can you hear me? You. <laughs> Great. Perfect. So, Obviously, the first thing I'm, I'm never to be able to ask you in the current circumstances is how are you doing? How are you managing to keep yourselves occupied and sane in these days of isolation? You, Kate. Uh, all right. Shall I go first? Thanks, Pam. Look, I'm I'm doing yes. very well. I I feel um, I feel like I'm one of the lucky ones, really. Um, am I here? Am I on? You are. Yes. Oh, I am. Yeah. Um, no, look, I feel like I'm one of the lucky ones. I uh, am very good at occupying myself in solitude and um, I'm managing to stay fit and healthy and connected to people. Um, uh, for those people who don't know, obviously, shooting obviously shut down uh, here in Melbourne. Um, and so there is a deal of concern for, for our colleagues and crew members who, uh, you know, may struggle during this time. But look, I am doing well. I'm an avid reader. I play the guitar very badly. Um, I go walking every day and I'm cooking. I'm going to put on some serious weight. Um, so look, I'm doing all right, um, you know, but I'm cognizant of the fact that some people are not in such a lucky position. So it's a, it's a, yeah, it's a concerning time. Sure is. But you're going to play, you're going to be such a fabulous guitar player by the end of this, I just know, Kate. And I already know that you make the most wonderful brownies, so, you know. So Take it as a learning I, I have to put my glasses on because I'm just trying to read some of the things that people are saying, and it's just... It, 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 you're right, John, there are people from around the world. It's extraordinary. I've just seen, hello, hello, Berlin, hello! <laughs> oh, yes, Berlin, Germany. Yes. Austria. Yes. Someone, 
Easter. <laughs> Guten Abend, meine Freunde. Um, it, I'm in Tasmania, in the wilds of Tasmania, and uh, as Kate said, that um, once this extraordinary time um, happened, uh, uh, we were shut down and I uh, rushed onto a plane and, and got into Tasmania just before they completely shut down the fortress walls. Uh, and, but I've just come out of two weeks of uh, mandatory self-isolation. Um, but frankly, it doesn't feel much different now, three days out, out from that, because basically, as we all, I think, are being told to do, we should stay at home and trying to do that, trying to kind of um, beat this thing. But God, it's an amazing, isn't it an amazing thing? I, just, I, I, I wrote to somebody the other day saying, I just feel that this, um, numbing mix of dread and wonder because not only is something kind of, I'm not going to use the word unprecedented because everybody uses it, but there's just something so extraordinary that we, you know that the world is going to be changed by this. Uh, and although horrific things are happening, and I'm sure for a lot of people around the world, you're all touched in different ways by this virus, um, I still think it's bringing up behavior that's quite beautiful. And even something like this little event where we're seeing uh, just the ping, ping, ping of people in <laughs> Brisbane, people in Malta, people in Russia, people in the UK, people in America, people in Canada. And, you know, it, it's just, uh, and suddenly we're all kind of reaching out and holding hands together for a minute. So thank you. Thank you, Barry, John, Vesna, Amanda, and everybody for making it happen. And thank you, Kate, for doing it with me. <laughs> so, you both mentioned that um, production has been shut down temporarily. Um, as you can imagine online, there's lots of rumour and speculation about what's going on. Can you clarify for us at all? Um, is, is half the season in the can already? Is that right? Uh, yeah, look, I think we can say this much. Um, we were essentially filming two seasons back to back, whether they're broadcast you know, as one marathon season or whether they're broken up into two was always, you know, um, a source of speculation. But my understanding is that we have one of those seasons in the can. So. I think, I th I think it, we got shut down while it was still in post-production. Obviously, there's a lot of editing still happening, but I think there was a, quite a mad rush in the last days before um, government guidelines really made it impossible for the work to continue. Uh, there was a mad rush to try to make sure that they had um, the 10 episodes of season eight um, filmed, if not completed and ready for delivery. Mm. Yeah. So they all had to be, they're being edited remotely, which is uh, a tricky business. So there's a whole, but you know, everyone is learning a whole bunch of new skills very, very quickly. So, you know, the editors and the directors are all, and the cinematographer grading, they're all doing it, you know. Yeah, and everybody getting Zoom savvy, which I assume many of you out there are as well. Yeah. Just maybe, if you're a Zoom newbie, welcome. Thank you, thanks Pam, that's me. I'm very new to this. <laughs> Look, I'm amazed, I'm amazed. Yeah, we're yes. all getting used to Zoom. This is something I hadn't even heard of uh, a week and a half ago. So uh, yeah. you're right, we're all learning new skills all the time. There's a I'm story, going... that, there was a thing on the news just before, sorry to interrupt you John, but there was a thing sorry. on the news the other day saying that um, the shares in Zoom have just gone through oh. the roof. But the problem is that there are actually two companies called Zoom, one of which is a defunct Chinese company or something like that that does, I don't know, street signs. And, uh, and uh, its <laughs> share price has gone from one cent like up to like as well because there's all these people um, investing in the, the wrong company. Anyway, sorry, over to you John. Wow. Well, all I was going to say is I'm going to go to my, my list of questions that have been sent in. Um, I'm going to start with a question that uh, two people have asked, actually. Bex and Alex over in Sweden have asked, um, Pam, did you always know that Joan would be returning? No. <laughs> is that a <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you. Sorry, Bex and Alex. So, so we're going to get through a lot. Yeah, we will do. So, no, I was, I was, I was, uh, I, all I knew, in fact, it, I'm sure people are bored by us saying this, but um, even though at the beginning sometimes of a season, 
um, the producers and the writers will have a what they call arc meeting with us as performers to give us a general sense of uh, where the storylines are going. Um, I, for one, never seem to remember what they said. I'm just usually too excited to be back at work. Uh, but having said that, even so, very often there will be elements of the story that um, always come as a complete surprise as not till the scripts come out. And sometimes, even when the scripts do come out, there'll be something hidden from us. For instance, the end of season, am I right in this, Kate, that the end of season mm -hmm. five, we knew somebody was not going to survive, but we didn't know who mm -hmm. it was. They were keeping the whole B. Smith. That, yeah, that um, was end of season four. Four. That was four, that's yeah. right. That, yeah. didn't we, didn't that, know. Did yeah. we didn't know the B. We didn't know about B's death. And, um, and uh, there were, might have been other little elements as well that were very much kept under wraps. Um, uh, I certainly, I didn't know that, the, that John Ferguson was going to get buried alive in a box um, until quite late in the piece. <laughs> And I assume that was her farewell. And uh, it wasn't until, well, I, this is no secret, is it? That, that, um, that uh, Foxtel and Fremantle, who are the producing partners in, in, in making this series, had decided that at the end of season seven, that was going to be the last season. And um, so it was completely filmed and completed with that understanding. And then suddenly a lot of things, whether it was outcry from fans, a few, whatever it was, whatever, they changed their mind and um, gave the green light to go ahead with the final 20 episodes. And it wasn't until that was well and truly given the green light that somewhere down the track, I got a phone call very quietly being asked whether I was available to come and um, um, get out of the box again, so. And that was, sh that, that was the, the scene that you see at the end of Seven where um, the gorgeous Leah Purcell is sent off to go into um, witness protection and then passes Joan Ferguson around a burning oil drum. That was shot very, very late at night, well after all the other filming for season seven had been completed. And, uh, and I don't even think my name was on the call sheet. They had some pseudonym, I said some AKA, it was all very secret school. Mm. And all the other people around the fire, the 44 gallon drum, were um, crew members. So there were no yes. extras, they were writers and crew members. No one, no one knew that was the final shot. Thank you. I've just noticed that um, Bex, who asked that question, has just uh, thanked us for asking it um, on the chat, which is very nice. Hi, Bex. Thank you. Um, I'll go to a question from Naomi, it's a nice little question. She just asks, um, how does it feel to be working together again? Oh, <laughs> who's going to gush first? I'll gush first. <laughs> oh, um, oh, look, it was just one I of the most... <laughs> it's just one of the most tremendous things the writers could have done for me. Um, <laughs> Oh look, it's it's so special, and um, and I can't say too much, but they have they've set us a few challenges. Um, and look, I adore working with Pam; she knows that. Um, and so it's a it's a real treat. It's um, yeah, it's a real treat. Look, the whole cast, that whole ensemble, I think is stronger than it's ever been. It's just a terrific team. Um, but yeah, I uh, yeah, Pam and uh, the the Joan Vera story is very, very special to me. So I'm yeah, delighted. Me too. It's just, it's great. And I, and it, I mean, I, I went into a kind of a, I stayed busy, but I went into a kind of withdrawal when I thought I was saying goodbye to my went with family. So to be able to come back in and um, be welcomed back into the family is great. And, um, and, and Kate's right, actually, that there are, that it's, the ensemble is um, as strong, and if not stronger than it's ever been. And there's several new um, uh, characters going to be introduced to audiences in this um, coming season. Um, Zoe Tarak is being one of those, Kate Box and um, um, uh, Vivian Jane Hall. Uh, Jane Hall. Yeah, and, and, and then lots of people that you know well and have grown to um, love and or hate. Or both. <laughs> okay. 
I'm going to I'm ask this next question because I really like the name of the person that asked it. This is from Destiny White. What a fantastic <laughs> name. Right? It's like Bond Girl, Destiny White. <laughs> um, Destiny would like to know, um, how do you relate and differ from the characters that you play on screen? What similarities do you share <laughs> with Joan and Vera? Oh. Um, look, Vera, Vera has, um, and, I, and I'm sure Joan does do it as well, but um, Vera has metamorphosed over the, the course of eight seasons. So there are, um, I look back at the Vera of season one and think, I really just did pull a character out of, well, I didn't pull her out of nowhere, I pulled her off the page, but there wasn't a good deal of Vera that I could relate to at the beginning. Um, uh, apart from, you know, maybe a strong work ethic. <laughs> um, but I certainly couldn't, I couldn't, um, you know, appropriate, you know, the being, you know, at the hands of an impressive mother or um, being quite so um, innocuous at work. I, she was a tricky, she was a tricky character and you kind of, the, the delight of playing Vera at that point was um, really reveling in being probably the least heroic character on the show, you know, like, you know, the person who is crushed. She's not behind bars, but she's crushed in another way. And, um, and then of course she has, she's graduated over the course of eight seasons. Um, I, look, we live in very, very different worlds. Um, and I guess you do storyline by storyline and scene by scene. I find moments and emotions and, um, you know, I hate to sound like an actor wanker, but just objectives and motivations that, of course, I can relate to wanting something or finding ways of getting what I want. Of course, I can find those in me. But there's, yeah, Vera and I are very different. <laughs> yeah, I would say that's true. I, I would hope so. <laughs> I would say that. I, I hope you're very different from um, Joan Ferguson. I am probably closer to Joan Ferguson than Kate is to Vera, really. <laughs> although, I'm, although, I mean, I mean, this, this is an interesting exercise. You probably should get the one, the one person to say what the other person, you know, what they share with. Yeah. The, with the, oh, yeah. Uh, uh, but I think, because I do think that strong work ethic thing is something that, that, that Kate has. I mean, she's extraordinarily um, um, organised and always looking to kind of mediate and be a voice of common sense and I think um, amongst us as a work family and I think that's that's something that Vera also shares in her kind of work environment but you're right Kate I mean the, the circumstances and the environments are so utterly different from what the way we live our lives and thank goodness but it's also what releases us to um, to play which doesn't stop us from stealing and borrowing from some of our own particularly with yeah. me, mannerisms and things I mean um, I think that when they introduced Joan Ferguson into the went with um, stories, um, uh, there was a small little thing about using some hand sanitizer or being slightly reluctant to shake hands with somebody that has kind of blossomed into a whole um, a kind of gym phobia. There's a storyline. No, never yeah. mind. Um, the, uh, that that um, you know that and that's built also on my slight OCD kind of anal retentive quality as a human being. But uh, uh, <laughs> other than that, um, I don't know. I'm always really interested in uh, it being a um, uh, a tall, uh, dark haired, well, going grey woman. Um, that all my life I've been. Uh, tr often treated as if I am kind of a, a figure of authority, just because people li literally look up to me, have to look up, most people have to look up. And so I've, the whole notion of uh, how, how people kind of um, live and wear their authority and power has always been very interesting to me. So it's something that I kind of, that I, that I think um, Joan kind of plays around with all the time too, particularly as she gets on the other side of the bars. Did, did the two of you go back to the source material at all? Because obviously, you know, behind me, we've got Prisoner, the original series. Uh, how much attention did you pay to Fiona Spence and Maggie Kirkpatrick's portrayals of roles? <clears throat> I didn't at all. Um, I didn't have a relationship with 
prisoner. I wasn't allowed to, it was called prisoner here in Australia, cell block H in some places. Um, I wasn't allowed to watch it as a child. And um, look, I saw, I, 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 I snatched enough, um, you know, glances of it that I knew how iconic the show was. I knew when they kind of reincarnated it as Wentworth, I knew all the characters' names. I knew there was a Liz Birdsworth. I knew there was a B Smith. I knew there was a... Um, but, you know, the idea of rebooting a season, a, a show, which is kind of a bit commonplace now, um, it was unusual back then. And, and, and I remember speaking to the setup director and, um, you know, the whole conversation was not about, um, you know, it wasn't a prequel, it wasn't a sequel, it wasn't a, um, a tribute. It was a whole reimagining. It was a whole 21st century twist on this old show. And so when I picked up the script and was asked to audition for the role of Vera, a.k.a. Vinegar Tits, I was delighted. I thought I never get to play the, you know, the cruel, you know, authoritarian character. And of course, I picked up the script and she was the absolute opposite. She was the complete reverse. And the intrigue of the show was, well, how does this, this mouse of a woman become Vinegar Tits? So Fiona's portrayal as you know, amazing as it was, wasn't wasn't necessarily a good launching pad for me. Um, and I think we were all trying to collaborate with, you know, there are lots of very potent kind of tips of the hat to the original show, but we were all very keen to collaborate on this, this whole new creature. Um, and that was kind of how I approached Vera. I, would, and I think it's slightly different from you, isn't it? I mean, would, I would say, Kate, that probably went with Joan Ferguson tips her hat or gloves or whatever it is closer to Maggie mm. Kirkpatrick's creation than maybe any other character. Um, but I would yeah. like to think that she's her own, uh, you know, she's a, she's a very different kind of um, incarnation of that character because it's a different world that she's living in and it's a different actor who's performing it. Like you, Kate, I, I never um, watched the original series, partly because uh, when it was first on, I was still in Canada. I think it showed up on late night television a little bit. Um, uh, and then by the time I came to Australia, I was working pretty solidly in the theatre or, well, first I was pulling beers in a pub, but both of them had the same hours basically, which meant that it was previously, I, I couldn't record it. So, or, but somehow you just absorbed it by osmosis, it's iconic nature. So I knew it was, um, I, I knew who these characters, like Kate said, I knew, who they, I knew who they were. I then started working with a lot of those actresses and I worked with Maggie a number of times and I could see uh, the, 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 the adoration that the public had for them and the characters that they created too. So you sort of, you're aware of it, it's there, it's in the case. Um, but I can't say that um, I've, um, I ever certainly didn't feel I wanted to go back and look at it for homework. I just trusted that whatever I'd absorbed would be enough and now we were setting off and creating something new. So I was gonna to respond to what writers were providing and what my fellow actors were and collaborators were. Um, throwing at it. I think that it's about time we invited someone from the audience to come and join us live to ask really? a question. So the way this is going to work, this is this bit slightly complicated, let's fingers crossed that it works. What you need to do, if you look down at the bottom of your screen, um, audience members, uh, there is a little symbol for a hand. So put your hand up and Amanda, who is sat in the USA, will select someone randomly to come in on the screen. You will be momentarily logged out, don't worry, and you'll see a, a symbol saying rejoin, which you may have to accept. And then don't oh, forget to... You, oh, we have somebody Sorry. coming in already. Charlotte, if you click the blue unmute button. Hello. Hi, <laughs> can you all hear Hello. me? <laughs> yeah. <gasps> It works. It works. Yay. Hi, Charlotte. Hello. Hello from England. So not very oh. far from John, actually. Hi. How are you two ladies? Oh my goodness. Where are you? From? Where are you? Where are you now, Charlotte? In England, in Perth. Oh, hello. 
Hello. <laughs> my goodness me. Uh, so you kind of touched on my question already, Kate. Um, but uh, you you can hear me, all right? Can you? Yes. That is all coming through. Okay, cool. Uh, but did you two really, when you first started on the show, did you have any idea of the arcs that your characters would go through in terms of their life journeys? Because obviously, Vera, what a turnaround from season one to season seven. Hmm. What? <laughs> that had to be a bit of a shock. I Me, mean, how did you two ladies feel about the character arcs that you go through? Um, look, we have this amazing team of writers and um, and they they dig themselves into narrative holes and they throw us into these ridiculous challenges and they revel in trying to, you know, get twist it and get us out and throw us back in and and um <laughs> and we kind of come to expect that. Um, I think all writers do. <laughs> yeah. Um, so look, no, there's absolutely no way I could have foreseen um that the the journey that, that Vera's gone through. There's absolutely no way um, I, I would have known that. Look, we didn't even know if this show would have more than one season. It was such an experiment at the time and it was playing on a, a subscription television station, which is, you know, was an, an unusual thing here in Australia. Um, so for it to get, you know, such popularity so quickly and, you know, we, but they, they've never run out of material. And um, thank goodness. <laughs> I knew that there was going to be a, I knew that she was going to become vinegar tits and, but I didn't know how that was going to happen. <laughs> and what the trigger was going to be and where that would propel her. And then, of course, she, you know, fell under the, into the toxic web of Joan Ferguson and that, you know, she was still very impressionable well, and that <laughs> turned her into something else. And, and then she came out of that and she's, you know, endured the likes of Jake and, you know, and so, so everything <laughs> that she's done and turned into, um, you know, has all come off that page and I've just responded to um to to everything they've they've given me to to um interpret. I would say too, wouldn't you Kate, that they um I mean I marvel at Marcia Gardner and the whole team of writers that work on this show. They're, They're amazing. The um, material they are. give out to you guys and you to perform it beautifully. And I think that, oh, thank you, Charlotte, but I think they, they also have, <laughs> they have a strong sense. I mean, they never know whether it's going to go on beyond us. And sometimes there'll, there'll be a commitment to a, a chunk, a, a season or two, but still mm. they're, they're, I, I feel that they are always plotting it um, as if the story will reach the kind of completion that they want. And so I think, I suspect um, that ever since the first episode of season one, there have been certain hopes that they've had about where character stories would go or where the overall story of Wentworth Prison would go. Um, but that within that, there's a lot of improvisation, there's a lot of responding to the talent that's in front of them. And I, I think that some of the extraordinary journey that Vera Bennett goes on uh, is, is really due to Kate's ability as an actress and that they <laughs> realise that she, this will be... <laughs> They get excited by the idea that they're going to see this actor tackling this thing. Um, not so much that it kind of necessarily will pervert the whole big, the grand arc, but that, that I'm sure a lot of the little things that happen along the way, whether it was B. Smith or whether it was, you know, Kaz or, or mm. uh, anybody, mm -hmm. a, a lot, it's a combination of those two things, an overall mm -hmm. grand design and then a sort of a, a much more um, micro, say, yeah, yeah, micro, almost kind of like chemical kind of response to what's <laughs> on a kind of macro level of the, the, the skills of the people that are involved. Mm. Well, thanks very much for your question, Charlotte. That was brilliant. You, you've set the bar high. And I'm just <laughs> I don't know about that. <laughs> well, I'm just reading, I'm reading the comments in the chat of people uh, loving your question. Um, Wendy has said <laughs> that she would um, she would just freeze if she came on, on the screen. <laughs> well, I saw a well, called Lily think... said she just burst into tears. 
So you've I think really thankfully, well. having met Pamela once before, I think I've already gotten through that freeze stage already. <laughs> having met you back in back at Wentworth Con in June, so I think yeah. I've already passed that. Especially seeing as I do um, a lot of singing anyway, so I kind of have a little bit of a. <laughs> I just Fair. jump into things really. <laughs> Well, I, look, I think so you've you, got to bring the thing down. You can start your own chat show, Charlotte. That's good. <laughs> right. Oh, Charlotte's gone. But should we bring in another question from the audience? Um, so again, get your screens, hit the, uh, the hand up symbol, and Amanda will select someone to bring through. Who is it? You're going to come along. I can't just say for the record, but I don't normally have a shrine to Wentworth and Prisoner behind yes, me. Yes, you do, John. No, I don't. Yes, no, do. I don't. It's just especially my special background. <laughs> <laughs> so we have Gemma coming up. So Gemma is about to appear. Oh, oh. On the can you see me? I can oh, hear yeah. you. Hello. And there she is. Hello. In, a, in a very oh, pink yeah. hat. Very good. Pink hat. Hello everybody. Oh, I can't believe it. I actually, I'm such a big fan of Wentworth. Um, and I, me and my friend Julie uh, absolutely love it. And um, we do a freak dance. When, when we were so excited about the freak, we did a freak dance. And we were Can so I excited. <laughs> Could you say hi to my friend Julie and my friend Dion? It, it, that would be amazing. Hello, Julie and Dion, but I want to see the freak dance. Come on. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh, 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 she's back! <laughs> I can't believe I'm speaking to you. I'm so. I'm just sorry. I'm. I'm. Uh, this has made my day. Gemma, Gemma, where are you? I'm in Bournemouth in the UK, so I'm very near the beach, but I can't get there, which is very sad. Yeah. Oh, of course not. But. So Oh, well, so, I think I did that dance when Pamela came back to the show. You did the what? The dance? I think I did that dance as well. Amazing. <laughs> <laughs> and we, we, I work at a special needs school and um, me and my friend, we used to, did you see it? Did you see it in the playground and do the little freak dance? <laughs> so, uh, a bit silly. Are you, uh, are you still, are you still, is the school still open, Gemma? Um, it's open, but only for very few amount of children, and I'm on a rotor, so I'm going in. But um, yeah, so I'm going in when I can, but um, not at the moment, which is a bit sad for all our kids. But never mind. Hello, <laughs> hey, Just can I just interrupt there and just do a little shout out to everybody who's been stood down and for whatever reason can't get to work or or, or fall in the paycheck at this time. Just we send our love and our very best wishes yeah, you know absolutely. to you know that we're thinking of you particularly if you're in the healthcare sector although i imagine definitely you're very busy at the moment but our hearts yeah. are with you and for all you do mm. sorry to yeah, you, thank you. so Gemma, Gemma, uh, do you have a question for our guests um, i i just wanted to ask um pamela really um and well and and kate um, what is the worst thing that you've had to have to had to act out really? Because obviously, especially with with the freak, um, uh, she's done quite a lot of horrible things. So I just wondered, what was the hardest thing that you've ever had to do? Ooh, well, well everything, everything's hard, but then I kind of like it when it's hard too. So it's um, um difficult. Like I mean, I, I still. Uh, there was an extraordinary day, and I have said this before, and I may have even have said it, um, it and you've heard it, Gemma, but that um, there was an extraordinary day that was centered around the filming, I think of episode 11, season five, which was when they kind of lynched Joan Ferguson and tried, and tried to hang her off. Oh, and, oh that and was that horrible, was, yeah. Um, it was extraordinary, I um, mean, it was difficult, um, yeah. but I also found it one of the most exhilarating and kind of moving days of my work on the series because even though I don't think it looks like it, it's, uh, we're always up against it in terms of time and budgets and money and, and to see everybody always works incredibly hard but they really yeah. pulled out of the barrel that day. It was Everybody was working absolutely at the top of their game. We couldn't have done it if it, it hadn't been the case and I saw it, so it was not only one of the hardest things. Um, yeah. 
it was also one of the most wonderful things. Yeah, yeah, for sure. That, that scene is also um, real testament to the extras on our show because it was, oh, yeah. I think it took two days, didn't it, Pam? I know there was a real full day, but but the yeah. extras had to be in that yard all day as well. And their yeah. background, but they're not. They act, you know, they had to respond to this really traumatic thing that we spent all day doing. And just in response to Pam saying that it's kind of collegiate energy during the course of that day, yeah. the extras were a really big part of that because they had to do a lot of acting that day. Absolutely, yeah. It's not the usual thing you do every day. <laughs> no. no, I have to also say though that one of the most difficult things to do, and anybody who's ever done any kind of work that, like we do, is um, yeah. the dining room scenes. It, how to eat food without really eating it. If yeah. you commit really strongly to eating the food, you will probably have to do it nonstop for eight hours straight. So it, it's, that's a little something to watch out for, how people build their little character traits about how the way they just play with their yeah. bread roll or... Uh, or that, eating, that, that's one of the, that is one of the hardest skills to kind of pull off to make it look credible uh, yes. commit, and yet still not kill yourself. <laughs> yeah but it's, it's amazing and I'm so pleased that you came back Joan we were so excited we couldn't believe it um it was amazing right such a surprise and um, yes very excited to see what happens next <laughs> me too thanks <laughs> indeed thanks, thank Great you Gemma. Hat. Keep the freak dance going. <laughs> it's going to be the next internet sensation. Right, I think, I think we've got time for one more question from the audience. So again, hit that, uh, hit that buzzer. I feel like I'm on a quiz show. Uh, hit the, the hands up signal. And... Hello. Nancy, hello. Oh, hello. Hello. <laughs> How are you? So press OK. Yeah, we can see. Oh, here we go. Oh my goodness. Hey, everybody. Hello. 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 Hey, Kate. How are Hello. you? I'm so you well. well. Hello, I'm Nancy. so glad. Hey, hey, Pam. This is marvelous. Good morning from Birmingham, Alabama in the US. And wow. Uh, Thank you so much for being here. Um, I wanted to ask both of you, um, I know no one likes to think about post Wentworth because I certainly don't, but do you think you would ever be inclined to do something we could see here without having to wait for it on Netflix? I mean, movies, I know that Pam does a lot of documentaries, but um, it would be great if we didn't have to wait so long because we are such huge fans of both of you. And, and I feel really great that I'm getting ready. I can look at you and talk to you. That's just made my day. Oh. The dog is even excited. Ellie goes to now. So um, <laughs> anyway, <laughs> bring, bring the dog. Bring oh, the dog she, on. She, just went, she just left. Hey, Pamela. It is good to see you. Good, good, good to see you. I so, see you now. You, you, Kate is much um, busier on screen than I ever ever have been. Kate, there must be a number of shows that you've you've done that are available now on different channels in the states. Um, uh, maybe Jack Irish if you're a fan of Guy Pearce. Um, I don't know how well that did internationally, but actually, Pam. I mean, I've spent eight years doing Wentworth, so a lot of my screen work is quite old now. Okay. So between... Okay. This would be well, a future thing. Yeah. Oh, a future thing. In the future, do you think you might be inclined to do some movies for us, some shows for us? It would be fabulous. Well, I certainly... Well, we certainly have the inclination. It's whether anyone wants to employ us um, and what state of health the industry will be in after we get through this. Um, true shutdown which has been very punishing for our industry but of course we would love to we would absolutely love to or to a theater like be live on stage that absolutely be but look, that nothing, be nothing in the planning but look you know we spend most of our lives as um entertainment folk not really knowing much and not being able to plan too far into the future but 
it's nice to know the invitations there. If it were up to me, you'd be here. Awesome. <laughs> awesome. I'm just hoping that we have, um, I, I just, I think the way we, it's so interesting, people have said this, I'm not saying anything new, but that in this extraordinary time, and so many of us are having to stay at home and or feeling um, scared or confused or fearful, would that we turn to the arts to um, console ourselves, whether it's listening to music or reading a book or watching a movie or watching Netflix or, or whatever it is. And, um, and I mean, you can't underestimate the impact that this whole thing is having globally on the people who create those um, works, particularly the, the collaborative arts like screen, film, theater, television. Uh, so I'm hoping that at the end of all this, that we are in a robust enough state uh, that, we can, that we can meet what I think is gonna be a need and a desire for everybody to come together and give each other a big hug and just share our experiences and our stories with each other on the other side of this thing. And um, if we could do it in Birmingham, Alabama, I would be there well, in shock. <laughs> well, shook. I love it. I, I thank you so much for coming on here, both of you, to do this for us because we are huge fans. I'm a member of your right red hand. I just can't find my pen. Oh. So, oh. Hail, friend. Hail. It's good to see you. Hello to the whole red right hand. Right, thank you. Well, that's perfectly leads to uh, what I was about to ask you to do because we're, we're in the last five minutes of um, this oh. online chat. I know it's gone so quickly, but I gather, oh. as well as the red right hand, there are other shout outs that you've been asked to do as well. Yeah. Yes. Um, do we have to sing? No, I'm just going to. I can't sing. Um, well, I think, but I would. <laughs> uh, right, well, happy birthday to Laura Whitaker somewhere in the UK and Marcus Wells somewhere in Canada. I believe it's your birthday today. Uh, I hope that's right. Birthday uh, to you. <laughs> well, that went brilliantly. <laughs> happy birthday, Laura and Marcus. Marcus. Happy birthday to you. <laughs> oh, I think there's a delay. I'm just a very bad singer. But uh, there are some other birthdays. I don't know if they're tomorrow or just slightly in the future. Uh, Jamie Bell, also in the UK, and Grace Villarreal, somewhere in the US. So anyone who's having a birthday, um, Hope you have a gorgeous time, however you spend it, alone or isolated, or just try and connect with someone and have a little dance anyway. Feels good. Yes. Happy I think, birthday. Um, I think have a birthday. has a birthday today, or has a birthday tomorrow, or even the next month, like me. Or, okay, when's your birthday? Not till June, mate. Hopefully we'll be out of here by then, but you know. Having a party. June. Yeah. Happy birthday. Yes. Yes. Uh, what's really lovely, I'm just looking at the, um, the chat. Um, everyone is now wishing each other happy birthdays. And I think Marcus has just come online and got very excited. Oh, Marcus! <laughs> it's, it's become a real social event, as it should be. I hope you're having a really great birthday there, Ray. Bro. <laughs> so, we, yeah. I can't believe, but we are pretty much at the end. So, I've just got one last question to finish off with. And I'm, I've been inspired by um, some videos that a new cast member, um, Zoe um, Tarakis, has been posting on Facebook. While she's in isolation, she's been filming various videos and songs. But she started off with the Cell Block Tango from Chicago. And it just got me wondering, what musical number do you think would be suitable for Joan Ferguson and for Vera Bennett? Pam? I know what oh. Vera's is. Okay. I know what Vera's is because we often set, sing it on set. Uh, it would be, you know, the version of All By Myself that Bridget <laughs> Jones sings at the beginning <laughs> of Bridget Jones. I can just imagine Vera Bennett in her bedroom as a teenager, well into her middle aged, singing All By Myself. 
the crew often sing it to me because I so often get left alone in rooms or in corridors on my own, dealing with shit on my own. So yeah, that would be Vera's. Oh, I need some help. Help me, Katie. What would I, what would be my number? Freak Other out. Than... Oh yes. <laughs> oh yes. <laughs> freak, freak out. Freak out. <laughs> yeah. What's, um, that, what's that song that um, they sing in Annie? The Miss Hannigan song. Little girls, <laughs> little girls. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's just that, that after the show finishes and Joan Ferguson's on the road, that, that's what she'll be doing a touring production of Annie. I'm sure she will. Um, that's a good question, though, but I can't think. Well, Crazy's gonna... good. <laughs> oh, well, please um, release. Me. Yes. Oh, perfect. <laughs> we have, I'm afraid, reached the the end of this first um, online interactive Screen Star event. I hope it's the first of many to come. And, yes. and further down the line, when life returns to normality, Aww. we hope to see you here in the UK very soon. And what's the cat's name, by the way? This is Phoebe. She's and so she's big so already. Big. She is, she's got so big. Um, and Phoebe would like to send a little shout out to uh, Teresa and Amy and everybody, the red right hand, wouldn't you? With her little silver right hand. Aww. Thank you so much for joining us. Um, Thank today. you. And it's I been a pleasure. Have, um, many um, online gatherings to, uh, to, well, to celebrate whatever you want to celebrate. But at the moment, uh, if it's the first one, we're the first cab off the rank for Wentworth um, uh, and I hope you will um, open your Zooms and doors and arms for um, all the rest of the cast if they come on and, and you know, I'm sure they'll be better than us, but I've had fun. Have you had fun yet? Can I, can I just echo what Pam said earlier? If there's anyone on this, um, this chat who's been with us tonight, if you are working in the healthcare centre in any country in the world, um, thank you, just thank you. Indeed. Well, wherever you've been watching in the world, um, even though we weren't able to hear you, I think you should stand up and give these ladies a, a round of applause, or at very least, do a freak dance. Yeah, absolutely. Get up and do a freak dance. Yeah, get up and do a freak dance. Thank you very much, and we'll see you again soon. Take care. So, lo so lovely to share this time with you all. See you. Thanks, everybody. Okay.